Party. Joining me now are Rena Shah, a Republican political strategist and senior advisor to the Seneca Project. She has also previously served as an RNC delegate in 2016. And as well, joining us is Michael Shore, a longtime political journalist covering Congress and the White House. He was covering the RNC this week from Milwaukee. Michael, let's get started with you this morning. A lot of people at the convention suggested all week that we were going to see a new Donald Trump and that the man was going to deliver a message of unity. That's not exactly what happened. You were there on the ground. Talk to me about what your takeaways were from the convention. Yeah, Charles, good morning to you. I, you know, I, I think that there, there are two different kinds of unity, right? There is sort of flexing about the unity within the Republican Party, and absolutely that existed. Uh, whether or not conventions are a place where you can extend an olive branch to the other side, I, I don't know. That that speech, which uh, lasted far longer than 15 minutes, far longer than any speech ever given at a Republican convention, did begin with the story about what happened last Saturday in Butler, Pennsylvania. But as it went on and on, I think you saw another version of Donald Trump. I'm not so sure if it came from humility because you don't see that a lot from him. But a lot of it came from what was going on on the other side with the Democrats. The fact that Joe Biden will likely not be the nominee, or at least that's how it felt there on uh, on Thursday night, made it so that he couldn't pivot toward Joe Biden. He had to go through some of the old favorites, such as uh, different judges and, as you mentioned, Charles uh, Nancy Pelosi. He couldn't invoke Biden. As a matter of fact, he made a point of saying, I'm only going to say his name once. Uh, so, yes, was there unity? There was unity at the convention. To be very frank, I've covered many, many conventions. I've never seen one without unity. Maybe the Democrats in 2016 between Hillary and Bernie, but even that was an exaggeration over how, how disunified they were. So, uh, yeah, I saw some unity. I saw a lot of passion for Republicans for Donald Trump, but I also spoke to a couple of representatives who were there who said, you know, this is, this is all fun for us now because it looks like we're in the driver's seat, but what happens on the other side is really going to matter most to us. Two different types of unity, Michael. That's a new one. I am going to have to borrow that at some point. Rena, I want to talk to you about this stage because that stage had a lot of interesting speakers, a lot of interesting performers, a lot of folks. We had Tucker Carlson. We had Kid Rock. We had Franklin Graham. We had Texas Governor uh, Greg Abbott. We had Amber Rose. We had Hulk Hogan. I mean, this was a very interesting mix of folks but at the end of the day, it still felt very much so like the RNC was clear in that it wanted to appeal to a white male audience. Is that fair or do you think that this was a sincere attempt at creating and displaying diversity by the Republican Party? Well, Charles, the reports this past week have me confused because I think a lot of people out there, journalists and pundits included, were watching a different convention than I was. The first three days felt very carnival-esque. I mean, it was bizarre shows of strength to pure adoration for what felt like a king, a King Trump, who he really wants to be, let's be frank about it. But going away from that, that final night, the fourth night, truly felt to me a bit like a funeral. Uh, it just got somber at some point. I mean, even before Trump's speech and watching his children come out, it's very obvious this is a family that's obsessed with power. There were numerous falsities. There was barely any fact checking that I saw that could have happened even internally of what the Democrats put out. So this was, again, more of the same. It was just talk, talk, talk that led to nothing. And I don't know what American woman in particular out there was watching that convention and felt like she was being spoken to. You know, America American women are going to determine the outcome of this election just a hundred some days away. And gosh, the Republicans missed an opportunity to talk directly to us. And it doesn't matter if you're a woman of color or a white woman living in flyover country. Republicans needed to grab the ball here and say, we've got you, American women. There was no way they could do that because abortion wasn't even talked about from the stage. It was a real missed opportunity. Four days, again, of carnival-like programming with no clear outcomes or solutions that make American people want to turn out for this, this kind of party. Rena, I want to follow up with you. You talked about the carnival-like atmosphere. One of the things that I thought about, which was just also really bizarre to watch, 
Will someone like Nikki Haley take the stage and ultimately sort of do a 180 entirely on everything that she's talked about with respect to Donald Trump and why he should not move forward as their candidate during the primaries and now do give this glowing endorsement of him? If you're the Trump campaign, do you feel really good about those types of endorsements? Or that, is it just more or less a matter of sheer force, the fact that this is the nominee and you have to get in line? Putting my strategist hat on for a moment, that was a real win for the Trump campaign. I mean, they've taken great, uh, you know, glee almost, if you, if you will, over the years of turning their enemies into friends. And that's exactly what Nikki Haley did with her own naked ambition on display. It's just obvious. She wants to mend faces with MAGA because she has political ambitions. There's no other reason that she would try to live this many political lives if she didn't want to live another. She's shown so many faces to this party. And now now she's trying to be something for them because she really wants a future and she can't have it without kissing the ring of Trump and promoting Trumpism. And that's what I heard from the stage. It was a real misstep on her part because now they have her right where they want her. And they wanted her because they saw how she performed in the primaries. They saw that she was on the trail at a time that Donald Trump was rife with legal problems and couldn't take to the trail. So what better than to make up for that lost time and grab those moderate votes, if you will, than have Nikki Haley come kiss the ring true win for the Republicans on that one and real sad for anybody who has principles. Mm. Michael, normally after a convention, a party sees a huge jump in terms of in the polling, their candidate surging ahead. You would have thought that the assassination attempt on Donald Trump that happened just days before the, the, this carnival that Rena just described would have also done that. But it really hasn't seemed to register among voters. The numbers are still the same. He's leading Joe Biden by a very small margin. So what do you make of that? And do you think that we will see a surge in the polls after this convention in the coming weeks? You know, it's a really unusual situation, Charles. I, I was one of the people who was skeptical as to whether or not the numbers would go up. I mean, where are the numbers coming from? Yes, there was a great deal of sympathy. There was a great deal of, um, you know, sadness over what happened in Pennsylvania last Saturday. But at the same time, uh, what? how does that translate into polling? Are people all of a sudden going to like Donald Trump more uh, politically because of that? It was hard to predict. And, and as you said, the polls thus far have shown that that's not the case. And then when you look at the other side of it. These bumps usually come in comparison. Well, you know, the American voter, the American pollie has no idea who the nominee is going to be on the Democratic side. Yes, President Biden has won the lion's share of the delegates over there. But at the same time, if you don't know what you're co comparing to, it's hard to know where the bump is coming from and how it's going to be registered. Democrats are going to start to get more excited about their ticket no matter what. And so that is the type of polling. And at that point, the polling is going to matter a little bit more than it may just now. That was Rena Shah and Michael Shore. Thank you both for getting us started on this Saturday morning. And coming up on Velshi, amid a mountain of ethical controversies and controversial rulings, President Biden is reporting.